Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Burton Albion. We have made it all the way to the end of January. The transfer window had just closed. Not a huge amount of business has taken place. Um, obviously, last time you were with us, it was October or early November. So a lot has happened in between episodes. First up, the World Cup has taken place and it was won by Italy. They beat Sweden in the final on penalties. It was a bit weird having the World Cup happen through uh, November and December, but yep, that's happened and Italy are the champions. The first thing that happened for us, actually in December, early on in December, we signed a new player. It is Senegalese international Khalifa Diop. He is an advanced forward. He can also play just behind the strikers as well. And he is a massive, massive pain in my ass. He's already... Already he's been here for two months, okay, and already he has missed training because he was too busy out nightclubbing. He hates me, and I have no reason to know why. I, he hated me before I find him for uh, going out nightclubbing as well. I don't know why. Khalifa Diop, uh, yeah, he's played three games, three off the bench. He's got one assist to his name. So far, not the best of starts for a player getting paid £8,000 a week. Back to the football, and it did not start very well at all. Up against Cardiff, we lost 3-0. This was on Boxing Day, by the way. Um, Tom Ince, Harry Soutar, our former player, and Pierre-Emil Hoiberg have scored all the three goals for Cardiff. We were shocking. We were just really, really bad in this game. Then we had a match up against Liverpool in the FA Cup third round. We weren't very good in this one either, but it is Liverpool. We do lose 1-0. Quarantine Tolisio with the only goal of the game. But to be honest, I wasn't that fussed because when you play Liverpool, you kind of expect to lose. Into the new year and our first points of uh, after the break, actually. Joe Sparrow with a penalty for us on 30 minutes. Genoi Donacien with the equaliser for Charlton, a game that we should have won. We were the better side. But we basically, since the break, we've not done too well. Because we also lost 3-0 to Watford. A hat-trick for Matteo Politano. 14 minutes, 31 minutes, and a penalty on the 51st minute. Jake Vokens also picks up a very bad injury. I think he's out for about two months. Which really isn't useful when you don't have any other left-backs. In the middle of all the turmoil, we do manage to win a game comfortably against Wolverhampton Wanderers. I don't know how we did it. Neil Williams getting a hat-trick. Callum Gribben also getting a goal. Morgan Gibbs-White scores for Wolves along with Jeff Hendrick. All the goals were scored in the first half. An entertaining game of football, a hat-trick for Williams as well. Three points that I'm very happy with. And then we go back to losing ways once again against Southampton. Our former team, Jason Denier and Merkel Grigoric with the goals for Southampton. We weren't very good again. They only had six shots, five on target. They made the most of their chances. Simon Moore, our goalkeeper, wasn't very good for us. However, shortly after, we do return back to winning ways up against Millwall away from home at the Den. It was a 2-1 victory. Rashawn Williams with the goal for Millwall. Mark Gooey scores a brace from centre-back. His second goal was actually really good. It was one of those Paolo Di Canio volleys inside the area. Um, Luciano Acosta gets himself sent off as well. By the end of the match, Millwall were down to nine men because along with the sending off... Uh, Kvalitia or I uh, also gets himself sent off, uh, sent off injured. Sorry, after they used all their subs. And finally, up against Huddersfield, it was a one-nil victory. Neil Williams once again on the score sheet. This was another game where Khalifa Diouf started the game. Shocking. Brought on Williams. Williams does the business, gets us three points. Transfer news now. We've not brought anyone in, which is a problem. We've sold two people. Tyler Walker is the first to go. Twenty thousand pounds. He's gone to Sunderland. I, I I have to admit, probably a waste of money. Probably a waste of money for Sunderland as well. And the reason why it's a little bit of a problem that we haven't brought anyone in is because we've sold our number one goalkeeper. Simon Moore, he's now 32 years old and has signed for Crystal Palace. He has gone for, I think it's like £900,000 in total. 925 after add-ons, 825 up front. We haven't replaced him. We're going to have to stick with our on-loan goalkeeper, Curtis Anderson, who's come in from Manchester City. He's not played for a while because Simon Moore has actually been in very good form. It's time for Curtis to step up to the plate. Josh Pask has also gone out on loan to Northampton until the end of the season, along with Regan Charles Cook, who has gone to Gillingham until the end of the season. That's his, uh, his second time at Gillingham. Did I buy him from Gillingham? I did. He came from Gillingham. Anyway, that is the transfer business done for us. League table-wise, despite the fact that we've had a few pretty bad results we're not doing too badly we are on 46 points sat in ninth place in the table we are six points now off of the playoffs there's a lot of teams in and around us 
um, possibly down to, let's say, Cardiff. We're all kind of fighting for maybe getting in contention for the playoffs. Personally, I don't think we're going to do it. Also, Bradford have managed to win two games. They've beaten Brentford and Nottingham Forest and drawn another game. Is the comeback of the century on? Are they going to somehow manage to find themselves 41 points in the final, what, 16 games of the season? It's unlikely, isn't it? It's very difficult for them. Time for the first match of the episode up against Preston, who are down in 11th place. So two teams also very, very close on points. This is, is all to play for, isn't it? Hopefully we can do okay. I mean, we're not on the best of form, neither are Preston. The starting lineup we are going to go for then. Curtis Anderson will be the goalkeeper. Mitch Clark is going to be the right back because Jason McCarthy has himself a cold. AD Stevenson, Mark Gooey, and Jake Vokins will round off the back four. Vokins has just come back from his injury, so they reckon he should only play 60 minutes. Mark Gooey is leaving and signing for Amiens in France at the end of the season. So this is going to be the last season we're going to have Mark Gooey. I tried to buy him from Chelsea. I said, I'll give you half a million pounds for him. They said £67 million. And now you've lost him on a free, you bloody idiots. In midfield for us, we will have Jamie Allen and Jonas David. Joe Sparrow, Callum Gribben, Afonso Suzo will be just behind Neil Williams. On the bench, we do have Tay Ashby Hammond, who's returned from his loan spell at, I want to say, Chesterfield? Probably wasn't. It was Kidderman's. Stevenage. It was Stevenage. Um, he was playing um, a very low level of football, I believe. So, yeah, he's back now on the bench. We also have the bad boy Khalifa Diop on the bench as well. I brought him. Okay, the reason why I've signed him, if we compare with similar players... Hold on. This is the comparison of him and Michael Oberfemi. Now, you know how well Michael Oberfemi was for us last season. I looked at that and went, that's, that's the one. He's the one. Statistically, yes, Michael Oberfemi is better at decisions. Like, he doesn't go out until 4 o'clock in the morning when he's got a match the next day. Um, Composure, it's... It, Michael Oberfemi's composure is spectacular, but Diop, uh, Diop sorry, isn't too bad, heading isn't great, but I think they're fairly similar-ish, kind of. I mean, some of the set-piece stuff isn't great. A 4-4-1-1 for Preston. This is our brand new stadium. I say brand new, it's the same stadium as before, but apparently one of our stands might be bigger. I don't know whether it actually is or not. You will probably see that we're, well, I think we're probably going to have about 9,000 people, 9,300 9, people, something like that is kind of our normal attendance now, now that we've got our bigger stadium. We are just over, or just under 20 minutes in, and nothing is happening. First highlight of the game on 25 minutes, Stevenson with the ball from the goalkeeper's kick out. AD Stevenson's long ball upfield tries to find Neil Williams and does. He needs some support in there. There's no one there, but Joe Sparrow has capitalised on the mistake from Subotic, gets his third goal of the season. Joe Sparrow hasn't been so great this season. He has started now scoring goals, which is great. Afonso Souza with the ball to Callum Gribben. Ball across to Mitch Clark. Clark crosses in. It's almost an own goal. It is going to be a corner instead. It deflected off one of the Preston defenders. Corner to be taken by Callum Gribben. It's deep. It's not a very good corner. David is going to get there first, but we're not going to see any more of it. I'm keeping a close eye on Jake Vokens. His condition is obviously lower because he's just come back from an injury. I might take him off at half time and bring on Ashley Eastham and then rearrange our back four. It is half-time. It is nil-nil. It's not nil-nil, Stuart. It's one-nil. Right, Vokent is going to come off. He's going to come off for Eastham. Eastham for... I can never... Gooey's the better one, isn't it? Gooey's better as a left-back. Well, he's right-footed for a start, which doesn't help, but he's got eight crossings, seven passing. That's kind of the, the concerns. What about A.D. Stevenson? He's also right-footed, but his crossing is a lot worse. I mean, they're fairly similar, actually. Gonna stick with Gooey. Khalifa Diop will be coming on at some point in this game. I want him to score a goal. It's a corner for Preston. It's cleared by Eastham. Only as far as Dempsey. Back to the corner taker. Dempsey wants again. Crossfield ball finds Story. Pays it back to Davies. We've pushed them back to their halfway line. Davies runs with the ball to Story. Story back to Subotic. They're in their own half now. Across to Kwania. Kwania? Sure. Gooey gets the ball though. Gooey, where are you going? Why have you decided to play it there? Ashley Eastham intercepts the ball, and now can we hopefully counter-attack? Joe Sparrow, he's got Mitch Clark on the right, who he does use. Clark to Gribben. Gribben, through ball to Williams. Williams is a little bit too wide, gets tackled. Jamie Allen is there, and Jamie Allen gets his first goal of the season. Callum Gribben, somehow getting an assist for that. 
I don't think he did anything for that goal, but it doesn't matter. We are 2-0 up against Preston just before the hour mark, and I'm thinking it is now time, I should probably pause the game, for Mr. Khalifa Diop. He needs to actually play well. I've already moaned at him for being bad at football and not scoring any goals, so hopefully he's going to take that on board. Corner for Preston to the front post. It's gone in. Colin Kwana, it's disallowed. He's pushed a player. Okay, that was terrible goalkeeping. Gribben with a free kick for us. It's gone deep to Gooey, and Gooey's effort is over the bar. We've got 20 minutes left to play. We've got 15 minutes left to play. I'm going to do the final substitution. Sean Longstaff for Jonas David. David's not had a particularly great game. He's also quite tired compared to some of the other players. Three minutes of normal time to play. Diop with the ball in his own half. Plays it across to Joe Sparrow. Sparrow runs to the right-hand side back to Mitch Clark, who's shattered. What's happened to Mitch Clark? I think someone's clattered Mitch Clark. Jamie Allen. Stevenson. Stevenson plays it all the way back to Anderson, who kicks it upfield. Finds Sean Longstaff. Across to Mitch Clark. Clark inside to Afonso Souza. Across to Mark Gooey. Can he find anyone in the area? He's gone for goal himself. And Mark Gooey, on the second attempt, makes it 3-0. His fifth goal of the season. He's loving life in Burton. Shame he's going off to France next season. Gribben with a corner. It could be four. Danny Bart clears it. Longstaff gets it, though. Longstaff needs to play it backwards, really. He's spun and found Callum, or tries to find Callum Gribben. Joe Sparrow, Longstaff, with the ball, runs, goes for goal. Terrible goalkeeping from Rudd, but does manage to keep hold of the ball. We've got, well, I was going to say we've got three minutes left to play. We've got no minutes left to play. It is going to be full time at the Pirelli Stadium. It is going to be a 3-0 victory against Preston. Something is going on with our team. We are very hot and cold at the moment, but this type of performance, hopefully we can keep that up. 3-0, three, three more points. We've hopefully moved up in the table. We have moved up in the table. We've moved up to 7th place, just three points now off of Sheffield United, who are the first team in the playoffs. The playoffs is still, it's still a target. It's still a possibility. One more point, and we've hit the magic 50 as well. So, if we can get a draw against whoever we're playing next, I can't remember who it is, we should be safe from relegation again. It is Ashley Williams Bolton. That is who we are playing next. They are way, way down the table. They are down in 21st place. So they are in a relegation battle. We are obviously, we've dropped down to 8th place actually by the looks of it because Hull, what did Hull do? Hull must have won the game. Um, it's still, it's still three points. All we need to do is just keep winning our games. The starting lineup for the Bolton game then in goal will be Curtis Anderson, Jason McCarthy, AD Stevenson, Ashley Easterman, Jake Vokens will be the back four today. Um, Gooey, where is he? Gooey's picked up a slight injury, so we're not going to play him today. Vokens is still on a 60, 60 minute sort of time limit for his matches, so he will probably be coming off at half time. Jason McCarthy has returned from his cold. Sean Longstaff comes into midfield to partner Jonas Davids, Joe Sparrow, Callum Gribben and Alfonso Souza are going to be the attacking midfielders and Khalifa Diop is going to be our striker today because Bolton, being at the wrong end of the table, should be a team that we should be able to beat. Hopefully. We're starting to get to the point now where lots of teams are having lots of uh, regen into their squad. He looks quite good. Ben Flanagan, I like him. Sebit Ajak on loan from Arsenal. He is very good. Brendan Richmond on loan from Middlesbrough is also very good, although he can't finish. I reckon we've got better strikers. I really want Diop to, to score a goal today. I think if he's going to score, Bolton could possibly be the match that he scores in. McCarthy with a ball on the right. First highlight of the game. Callum Gribben goes for goal with his head. It is just over the bar. Let's keep that going. Free kick for Bolton. Richmond runs towards goal, puts it into the top corner. Brendan Richmond opens the scoring on 18 minutes. That was not expected and not what we want. Wasn't the best of goalkeeping either. Gribben with a free kick for us. Goes for goal himself, hits the bar. 20 minutes in, it is 1-0 to Bolton. Gribben with another free kick. This time, curls it wide of the post. We're getting closer. Beavers with a throw. McCarthy wins the header, though. It's headed back towards him. McCarthy gets it back. Jonas David holds up the play in midfield. Across to Jason McCarthy. McCarthy now forward to Joe Sparrow. He runs down the right. Longstaff. McCarthy's made a run. It's played across instead to Vokens, who doesn't get the ball. And now Richmond can run it through. O'Brien for Bolton. Is it going to be 2-0? He goes for goal. Side foots it wide of the post. Vokens with a throw for us, 26 minutes on the clock. David, Afonso Souza into the area, plays it back to Longstaff, who rattles the bar, and Diop cannot get on the end of it. Turner's goal kick 
for Bolton. 28 and a half minutes now on the clock. Lots and lots of stuff is happening in this game. Vokins, Longstaff, back to Jake Vokins. Jonas David stands there with the ball, the German. Plays it across, finds Vokins once again, who is making a run. Afonso Souza, back to Vokins. There's five in the area if he can cross it in. Holds up, Longstaff, takes a few touches, goes for goal and hits it well over the bar. That was not the best plan of action. We've had 13 shots and just two on target. Half time has come and it is 1-0 to Bolton, but we, we are the better side. Aggressively, show a bit of desire because we should be winning this game. We are easily the better side. We're having plenty of shots, but they're all from probably too far away. And I think Sean Longstaff's probably having most of them. McCarthy's throw first, well, early on in the, uh, in the second half. Joe Sparrow with the ball. Plays it all the way across to Vokins, who hasn't come off at half-time. Runs inside, gets tackled. It is going to be a penalty, and I'm hoping it's Joe Sparrow stepping up to take it, because he should be our number one penalty taker. It is Joe Sparrow. Goes for goal straight down the middle. It is 1-1. We are back into this game. 50 minutes on the clock. We should, hopefully, just score another two goals, win this one 3-1, and we'll be good. I've demanded more from the team. Diop is on a 6.3. This is what I like. This is what I mean. I want to give him an individual team talk. Right, Williams is going to come on for Khalifa Diop. Diop, I'm thinking, might need to play a couple of games for the under 23s just to get his confidence up. Gribben with a free kick. He's going to go for goal. He does go for goal and hits it wide once again. That is why we're having so many shots because players like Gribben and Longstaff are going for really long range efforts. Eastham, Afonso's not going to get the ball first. Drama does. Drama takes it round Afonso. Drama crosses in. He's clipped the top of the bar. No, he doesn't. Anderson managed to save it. I don't know how you can save it when it wasn't even going in. It's a corner. Corner comes in from number seven. It's cleared by Stevenson, but not very well. Vela. Now Richmond. Back to Vela. The corner taker once again. I'm not going to try and say his name because I can't do it. Now to Hubbard. Hubbard gets tackled by Joe Sparrow and Sean Longstaff can clear it upfield. McCarthy crosses the ball in. Gribben has gone and got himself sent off because he's a flipping clown. Right, we're going to play the weird square thing. I'm not going to change anything. We're just going to keep everything as is. Gribben, I don't know what happens. Every now and then he just goes, you know what? Let's get some red cards. We've got a few minutes left to play. I'm going to try and do a shout. We've got five minutes. Vokins goes for goal. He's hit the bar. It's come back to Vokins. He doesn't manage to get the ball. And we are going to draw 1-1 with relegation threatened Bolton. Unless something comes of this. Richmond with the ball runs outside. We are on 95. Longstaff tackles, kicks the ball upfield. The full-time whistle goes. It is a one-all draw at the Pirelli Stadium. And that is a game that we really should have won. 22 shots, five on target. I'm not sure how that's only five on target. I'm really, really not. I don't get it. Um, also, we've had zero shots from both of our strikers. And Souza had zero shots as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's not five. That's 11. We've had 11 shots on target. Um, I'm not really sure why you're only saying there's five. Callum Gribben has been banned for a match. I'm only going to give him a warning. Um, I did shout at everyone after the match. That is fine. So we have dropped down to ninth place in the table, but we have hit the 50-point mark. So another season of championship football will await us as long as we continue playing the game. That is Khalifa Diop, you're going to be playing under-23 football for 90 minutes of match because I need you to actually get better at football. What are your negatives? You oppose the manager, and I don't know why. I have no idea why you oppose the manager. Like, look at this. I don't get it. Why are you the only one? You're the only one. If we go to social groups, you've got no friends. So, think about it. Maybe, just maybe, don't oppose me, and you might suddenly get better at football. That is going to do it then for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And I'll be back next time, somewhere in March. Possibly Nottingham Forest, Birmingham, maybe. It might be Birmingham, Middlesbrough. I don't know, somewhere around then. 